Hello guys, welcome to my channel. My name's Hannah and I post videos every other Monday and Friday and then I post these little videos every Wednesday. Fun fact about why I do this, one of my best pals cannot watch anything scary, chungu kangai, interrogation like without having someone narrate or react to them. Um, I would like to thank everyone from the out outpouring, outpouring? Yeah, outpouring love and support. On my last one, I did Sang a Boon. If you don't know, Sang a Boon somehow left her boyfriend in a suitcase to die and then had video proof that she left him in there to die. I don't know. This video, we're doing the interrogation of Colonel. Colonel, I don't think I can know. You'll hear him pronounce it. Russell Williams. If you're noticing, I cannot say my arms. I have a speech impediment. Fun fact. Um, with that being said, a little disclaimer. We're watching this video brought to us by JCS Criminal Psychology. I like a lot of his videos. I feel like he does some of the best interrogation videos as of late. Well, that I've found. That, I believe, Lon Kangheim has. Good ones. I have not interviewed any of them. I know you hear noises in the back. It's literally almost 10 at night. So, sound is going to dwindle down. With that being said, let's jump in. Also, you will not be seeing ads. I will be skipping ads. Like, they will be edited out. But I will make comments on ads. Because I'm goofy. I love <laughs> just being like, oh my god, that I was so goofy. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's get into it. David Russell Williams enrolled in the Royal Canadian Air Force in 1997 and was soon promoted to captain by January okay. 1st, 1991. From that moment on, he would oh have no, been addressed as Sir by his subordinates and Captain Williams by his superiors. Described as an elite pilot and shining bright star of the military, he quickly rose he through the got ranks that goofy and was promoted to, to Colonel in June of 2004, while also being appointed the role of commanding officer at CFB Trenton, Canada's largest Air Force base. He was essentially in full command of over 7,000 military personnel, all of whom would have then referred to him as Colonel or Colonel Williams without Colonel. exception. This but would have afforded no him an extensive there. amount Colonel. of psychosocial equanimity and it's confidence an and wasn't exclusive <clears throat> to his work life. His designated title of Colonel would have been printed on all forms of identification and every formal encounter would sanctify this military standing. A doctor, lawyer, police officer, or any other figure of authority would recognize and complied to the traditional courtesy of addressing him by his professional rank, boosting his composure and self-assurance each and don't every time get as that his elevated social standing and military killer. achievements were accentuated for all to see. There was one exception, however, and that was the day he met Detective Sergeant Jim Smith. Before clarifying the psychological relevance as to why a senior detective would purposefully refrain from addressing a highly respected military commander by his formal title, first consolidate each of the elements and circumstances that led to the crossing of paths between these two profoundly dissimilar yet equally fascinating individuals. Ten days earlier, on January 28th of 2010, Andy Lloyd received a call from his mother around midday stating that his younger sister, 27-year-old Jessica Lloyd, Okay, she failed babin. to show up to work and wasn't responding to phone calls or text messages. He immediately drove to her isolated home on Ontario's Highway 37 and discovered she wasn't there. There was no sign of a break-in, yet Jessica was known for leaving her doors unlocked and all of her personal items <laughs> were still inside the premises, safe. including her phone, passport, and driver's license. Ottawa that is known for its remarkably right. low crime rate and widely recognized as the safest city in Canada. The local Ottawa authorities pull, had resources to spare. What's going on here? 
Yeah, person's same. investigation was launched immediately, which included an entire division from the Ottawa Police Force, over 2,000 members of the public, and even a specialist search and rescue unit from the Canadian Air Force. The word spread extremely fast across the city through the help of the media, and on the second day of Jessica's disappearance, an anonymous member of the public came forward with vital information. He stated that while driving home from work the night before, at roughly 3 a.m., he drove past Jessica's house and noticed an SUV parked in a field just a short distance away. He stated that he remembered feeling that something just seemed off, as it was parked in such an unusual area at such a late hour, and he had drove past the premises thousands of times before and not once seen a vehicle before that moment. Police immediately canvassed the area in question where they found tire tracks in the field and boot prints leading up to Jessica's house. They had attained their first two significant pieces of evidence, which then became the foundation for the next stages of the investigation. Police immediately set up six roadblocks throughout the surrounding area and stopped every SUV that passed in the hope of finding a match to the tire tracks. They reportedly stopped over 200 vehicles over the next four days, yet had no luck, and were on the verge of reassigning their manpower from the roads to conduct foot patrols in off-road areas and pathways. However, at roughly 7.30 p.m. on February 4th, their luck did a full 180, as the sports utility vehicle of Colonel Russell Williams was stopped. He was reportedly polite and nonchalant about what he thought was a routine traffic procedure and was sent on his way after just 90 seconds. Unbeknownst to him, he was immediately placed under police surveillance from that moment on, as his tires came up as a complete match to the tracks found in the field near Jessica Lloyd's house. Two days later, on Sunday, Yo, February the 7th, I... he received a call from police headquarters in Ottawa asking him to visit the premises for the purpose of answering questions in relation to an ongoing investigative matter. The colonel didn't inquire further and agreed to drop into the police station immediately. He reportedly told his wife that he would be back for dinner before setting off that looks and like arrived his mom. at the headquarters shortly before 3 p.m. He dated he was someone's mom? He's married to someone's Smith. mom? That looks like a mom. Polygraph technician Yo, and senior he investigator he's collecting of the Police and Behavioral Sciences Unit. Uh, I'm just going to move your gloves here. That's a little microphone, just okay. to make sure there's nice and clear. Um, as you can see here, everything in this room is uh, videotaped and audio taped. Have you ever been interviewed by the police in a, in a room like this before? I or? have never been interviewed like this. Oh, no? Okay. Well, I guess the closest to uh, interview by NIS for top secret clearance. Oh, yeah? All right. Well, again, Russell, I appreciate you coming in. Uh. The gas canade is casually acknowledged, yet quickly brushed to one side by the detective, followed by the informal address to the subject using his first name. He immediately sets the stage for the interview and takes the colonel down from his elevated platform for the sole purpose of stripping away confidence. This increases the telling signs in body language and intonation when information is fabricated and also decreases cognitive stamina, lessening the amount of time an individual can keep a facade before they essentially break. An investigation like this, I mean, I'm sure you can appreciate it's been big news, uh, especially yeah. down uh, Belleville Way. Um, and, you know, obviously our approach to cases like this is that uh, uh, we don't give up on somebody being alive until mm -hmm. we get evidence that they're not. So um, because of that, we're treating uh, Jessica's case uh, as an emergent situation, Absolutely. obviously. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're fast forwarding things that we might normally take our time with. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why uh, we're here on a Sunday afternoon. He's like, mm-hmm, so, mm -hmm. uh, But like, he's probably it. thinking um, like, they don't know a pretty thorough I today. Okay. had a hand. Um, I got a sliver. The reason for that is because uh, the last thing we want is to <sighs> call people back again and again and again, okay? Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over a number of things and uh, I'm gonna explain what all those are to you, okay? okay? Um, I'm a big coffee guy, I don't know if you're uh, a coffee guy or I'm not, but I didn't want to drink yeah. in front of you, so. No, I appreciate um, that. All right, go ahead. I could uh, definitely, are they black? Yeah, they're just black with uh, with sugar. All right, and again, um, like I said, this interview is going to be very thorough. Mm -hmm. um, but again, uh, I have a simple rule when I talk to people. It's uh, I'm sure you're the same way. I, I treat pe everybody with respect. I don't mm -hmm. want to ask you to do the same for me. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off by uh, going through um, what your rights are, okay? Kay. Just like everybody else, okay? Kay. Um, have you ever been read your rights before? No. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you've seen it on TV a whole bunch of times, right. but that's usually the American version, so okay. I'll go over with you briefly, okay? Mm -hmm. Russell, you've seen it on TV a whole bunch of times, right. but that's usually the American version, so okay. I'll go over with you briefly, okay? Fun fact, Russell, I've never actually heard the Canadian Miranda rights. I didn't even know um, Canada had 
Okay. Set point it. Anytime money you feel uh, you want to leave here, you feel free to do so. Maybe I'm dumb. I don't, so walk I don't know. Walk anytime you want. Okay. I Although don't the know. subject was free to leave at any time, there was a very subtle yet highly effective subconscious strategy set in place to try to stop this from happening. The detective has sat between Russell and the door. You will see this method utilized in almost every interrogation, as it's a subliminal message essentially telling the subject, if you want out of this room, you have to go through me. Um, if there's anything that comes up in our interview today, Russell, that, uh, that you feel you want to talk uh, to a lawyer about, sure. um, you, just, uh, you just let me know, okay? Sure. And the reason for that is I want to explain to you exactly what's going on here, okay? Um, uh, Jessica uh, Lloyd is, um, is one of uh, four cases that we're currently investigating, okay? Right. Um, and essentially what's happened is over the past uh, uh, about four or five months, um, there have been four occurrences, that, like I said, that we're looking into. Mm. Uh, two of those occurrences occurred in September of 2009, yeah. um, and very briefly, they were up in the, uh, the Tweed area. Yeah. Uh, they involved uh, somebody entering uh, two different women's houses mm. um, in the evening hours and uh, committing uh, sexual acts. Yeah. Okay. During 2009, there were 34 break-ins and attempted break-ins in the quiet town of Orleans, Ottawa, resulting in the theft of hundreds what of the intimate fuck? female Ottawa? garments, That's not one incident of rape, safe. and what one incident mean? of forcible confinement. What do you mean? Ottawa was the safest place in Canada. All these occurrences took place not far from the home of Russell Williams, who is now the prime suspect for each of these infractions at the time of his interrogation. Yep. Uh, in uh, November of 2009, uh, a young lady by the name of uh, Marie France uh, Como. I hope this um, is. Yeah. Was found uh, murdered in her home in Brighton. That's pretty and, close. Uh, we believe that there's a sexual uh, component to that crime as well. Corporal Marie France Como was a 37 year old <laughs> military traffic technician based at CFB Trenton. She was raped and suffocated to death inside her home in late November of 2009, which the oh, Colonel geez. was also the prime suspect for at this moment. And um, then, most recently, we have Jessica Lloyd's disappearance. Mm -hmm. Okay? So essentially, when you're looking at those kind of crimes, we're looking at a number of different uh, potential criminal charges, all right? Um, we're looking at issues uh, all the way from the most serious one, which is first degree murder, mm -hmm. uh, kidnapping, uh, sexual assault, mm -hmm. uh, break and enter with intent to commit sexual assault, yeah. um, forcible confinement, okay? And uh, so what I want to make sure you understand, and this is what we've been doing with everybody we've been talking to, is that Clearly, when we find out who's responsible for one or all of those crimes, yeah. uh, they could be charged with one or all of those offenses, okay? Whether it's you or whether it's anybody else, right? Absolutely. And that's why it's important that we uh, make sure that people understand what they have to do and what they don't have to do when they're talking to us, mm -hmm. okay? So as I said before, any point today uh, you feel the need, you want to speak to a lawyer, uh, you let me know, and okay. uh, we can take you to a room where you can do that in private, okay? Um, is there any reason you want to call a lawyer now? No. Okay. These first two attacks uh, happened uh, not that far from my place in Two Eagles. The second one did. Yeah. Um, I think he. Happened, I think him mentioning that they didn't happen very far away from him is very interesting. Oh. Oh, okay. That the third one was very close. I think that's yeah. very weird to mention that before the police. The analysis of vocal intonation is a tricky thing when dealing with interrogations, as it cannot be used as evidence in court. Yet intuition would give many the sense that discomposure is emanating from the colonel at this moment. The way he is speaking comes across as slightly nervous and unsure. He would appear to most as being agitated in the manner he is both processing information and communicating his responses. This type of cognitive recognition is a difficult thing to articulate into words, and investigators simply characterize it as gut instinct, which Detective Jim Smith would have no doubt been feeling at this moment. Okay. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm aware of that. From like I was saying, cases. I think it's interesting that he uh, mentioned this with in front of the police, to, uh, because me personally, okay. if uh, I was being looked at for a, a missing person, I might be and, uh, saying, oh yeah, you know, like these of, uh, took place close to my house, like, whoa. Couldn't pay me enough to, to say that one out loud, so, but because um, essentially uh, there was a, a, a connection um, between you and uh, and all four of those cases. Okay, gamers, I'm actually gonna go grab a blanket. I'm kind of cold, so see you in a secky with a blankie. So I'm back <laughs> with my blanket, and I also can have my neck pillow, but I'm being fucking horns calling by it. So, it's not neck pillow time, but it is blinky time, and I also don't know why I'm pulled out so far. Give me a second. Jesus. 
I fixed it. Let's go. Would you agree? The colonel is asked to state his movements and act. Actually, let me move my setup. Give me a second. Yeah, this is it, guys. It's gonna. I'm still winning these fucking. Okay. Video over the past four days, which is known in forensic psychology as gathering pretext. The detective wants to get an initial alibi from the suspect before the confrontational phase of the interrogation begins. This is the most calm a state that he intends to keep Russell in before he ramps up the pressure. And a more relaxed suspect often results in more detailed pretext, thus more information to scrutinize and correlate with any changes made at a later stage. Friday on the day, I was. Um Okay. Yeah, Tom uncomfortable the, silence. They just kind of sat there for a village second. in Ontario, like, where the colonel had a second vacation home located roughly 125 miles from his house in Ottawa. Okay. Uh, so we backtrack then. So all day Friday, you're at home. Yeah. And then w what time do you leave to go to the base to sleep there on the Friday night? Um. to the base and spend the evening there and get up for the 5.30? Yeah. Okay. That's right. So we backtrack from there. Um, you, when did you arrive at your home uh, at the cottage? Can, I want to get confused between your home in Ottawa and the home yeah, in Tweed. So, uh, no, I had been in Tweed all week. Yeah. Uh, the week prior now. Uh, yeah, I think that's the case. I was in Tweed all week. Through Saturday. Okay. So, um, if you didn't have the stomach flu on the Friday, what was your schedule that day? Right. Okay. Um, what would have been my schedule? Just a standard schedule in the office. Okay. So, uh, office brief in the morning, a couple, uh, couple of meetings. I can't remember what the specifics were. Hey guys, the craziest thing happened at work today. Was it I was talking found out that it's Spectrum Mobile Unlimited is just twenty nine ninety nine. You get another line free. Okay, so um, Thursday night you slept at Tweet, or you? Yep. All right. And what did you do Thursday during the day? Thursday during the day, I was at the base again. Yeah, nothing. I was not flying, so I was in the desk. So I would have gone in early in the morning back in the evening. Okay. The method of gathering pretext is then focused on the murder of Marie France Como. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to walk you through November, but I'm going to take you to a date that's probably pretty fresh in your mind uh, uh, the day that, uh, that Marie France uh, Como. Yeah. Uh, do you remember how you found out? I uh, do. You know, I was sent an email. Um, well, as soon as the, uh, the off staff and the base. Learned, they told me. Okay. So I got an email, I can't remember if it was late at night or in the morning, but certainly I saw it, uh, I want to say first thing in the morning because I had just come back from Ottawa. I was in Ottawa for uh, um, a set of meetings on one of the days. I can't remember what day we were talking about, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, I'm actually probably going to move you guys back up. I need my laptop. Bring back in business, baby. Absolutely. Hey, how did you know? I'd only met her once. She was on a crew. I was on a Okay. You know uh, roughly when that happened? That we were on the same crew? The, the time you met her, the one time there, yeah? It was soon after I got to the base, so uh, I, I don't remember exactly what I would say.
I think my bones are getting connected. Let's see. Oh, they did. Thank fucking gosh. Okay. Um, now, you got that email you notifying know, you that something happened. Uh, do you have uh, any kind of a, a clear recollection as to how your schedule was going that week? Well, I can't remember what, again, what day that uh, the message came in. Just a I love the weird, uncomfortable, awkward silence like this. I think it really... Like, this interrogating is giving him no time of day because he probably killed all these ladies. This was the third time in quick succession the colonel stated that he couldn't remember the answer to the question. A normal interaction between two parties would most often elicit the person posing the question to reassure the individual it was directed at. Statements along the lines of, don't worry if you can't remember, we'll move on, or it was a long time ago, it must be difficult to recollect, would be afforded as a form of consolation and to also break the uncomfortable silence. Even during a legitimate witness statement, some form of emotional assistance or encouragement will often be given, especially to someone in the midst of recollecting a distressing moment or time period from the past. On this occasion, there is no such reassurance from the detective whatsoever, only a stoic gaze and not a single shift in body posture during the moments of silence. Like I said, I love this awkward, like, silence, because they just kind of, like, What, I, what we learned after the fact was that the, uh, the MPs had learned uh, of her death, I think quite a bit after her body had been discovered. Okay. So, I think what happened, no, I'm sorry, just a second. So if we were to, uh, to you know, do a, a similar uh, investigation in your background, is there, is there anything you can think of that anybody may have misinterpreted or anything uh, in your history that somebody might say Russell Williams uh, Absolutely. did this? No. Okay. It'll be very boring. What's that? It'll be very boring. <laughs> All right, because essentially that's what I'm looking at. Is it, uh, um, I th you seem like a very intelligent person, and I think you can see how um, a surprise like that would uh, certainly set off some alarm bells in investigation, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, so the next thing we need to cover off is, uh, well, I'll just ask you this straight out. Uh, given the types of crimes we're investigating, uh, do you get much chance to, uh, to watch television shows, CSI, things like that? I do watch, uh, I prefer Law & Order, but I do watch CSI occasionally, yes. Okay, so you have an idea of actually no, I prefer like that, Law and Order, not CSI. Fucking loser! What a nerd! Uh. What uh, What do you need? Well, um, would you be willing to supply things like fingerprints, blood samples, sure. things like that? Yeah. Okay. Um, the only two pieces of evidence that police had acquired at this point in time were the tire tracks and the footprints outside the missing person's residence. What many are unaware of is that the DNA found on Marie France Como was not admissible, as her body was highly decomposed at the time of discovery, thus making any genetic analysis virtually impossible, as this was before the era of the latest DNA testing method known as next generation sequencing. Only one of the sexual assault victims had male DNA found on the back of her neck, yet this was by far the least severe attack which falls into the bracket of forcible confinement and had no exterior elements connected to the more serious infractions of murder and rape. The evidence of the tire tracks would be easily refuted by a defense team as they were a relatively common brand for off-road vehicles which would extinguish the BRD standard of proof, also known as guilt beyond all reasonable doubt. The only significant piece of evidence were the footprints. It was the singular and emblematic element linked to the culpability of Jessica Lloyd's disappearance, and notice how the colonel looks down at his own boots as he gives his response to the following request. <laughs> why would yeah. why would he look down at right. his own um, fucking I shoes? What like, we're gonna, we're gonna ask what a dead giveaway! Right? Like, <laughs> I told you when I came in here uh, that I'm gonna treat you with respect, and I've asked you to do the same for me. My laptop was goofing. Um, Sorry, gang. We talked about the whole idea of how we've uh, 
uh, approach to here, okay? Uh, the, the trying to be as discreet as possible, mm -hmm. okay? But the problem is, Russell, is every time I walk out of this room, there's another issue that comes up, okay? And it's not issues that point away from you, it's issues that point at you, okay? And I, wanna, I want you to see what I mean, mm -hmm. all right? We just came off of watching like two ads back to back, but I found out why my laptop was goofing. It was because I had it, the screen touching my freaking tablet case, and it was bugging. Let me just no more in an action with each other. I, I don't know why that caused it, but one time I did spill a monster energy drink in it and also drink off it from standing up, so that's probably why the footwear impression of the person who approached the rear of Jessica Lloyd's house mm -hmm. on the evening I forgot the 20th, like military men like yeah, always right. have to wear boots for whatever reason because they're not really um, fashion forward the OPP who's uh, basically world-renowned uh, his name is John Norman mm -hmm. and essentially with footwear impressions uh, you're in a situation where you're you're pretty much in the area of, uh, of fingerprints, mm -hmm. okay? All of the previous affirmations were fabricated for the sole purpose of heightening psychological pressure. Footprints are not even close to being as indistinguishable nor incriminating as fingerprints. This is a photocopy of the boot that uh, you took off your foot yeah. just a little while ago, okay? Yeah. Now, I'm not an expert in footwear impressions, so I rely on the experts. Footwear impressions are very much like uh, like fingerprint comparisons, okay? You take a look at this print, and again, this is one print. This mm -hmm. person walked through, there's several different prints to compare, mm -hmm. so we're gonna get features off of one print to compare, features off of another print to compare. Yeah. These are identical. Okay. Your vehicle drove up the side of Jessica Lloyd's house. I just know he's funny can the fuck out. Like he ain't saying nothing. He's not saying nothing the right the now, ladies. January. Okay. You want discretion. We need to have some honesty, okay? Because this is this he's is shitting himself. I really think I can fast. know it because I'd shit my pants if they were like really, I know really you then I'd be like. Hmm. Jesus, an asshole. This is getting beyond my control. Alright, I came in here a few hours ago and I called you the way I called you today because I wanted to give you the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. But you and I both know you were at Jessica Lloyd's house and I need to know why. You need to explain it because this is the other problem we're having, Russell. Okay. I don't know what to Again, say. You don't get to me. say that. Tell us what's up, dude. Right now, there's a search warrant being executed at your residence in Los So your wife now knows what's going on. There's a search warrant being executed at the, your residence in Tahiti and your vehicle's been seized. Okay. You and I both know they're going to find evidence that links you to these situations. You and I both know that the unknown offender, male, may, on Marie Francis. Who the hell is body, swallowing the mic when they're talking the black? <laughs> quite possibly before the evening's over. Okay. This is a major investigation. The Center of Forensic Science is on call 24 hours a day helping us with this. Mm -hmm. Your opportunity to take some control here and to have some explanation that anybody is going to believe is quickly expiring. 
That evidence comes in when that DNA match, when that phone rings and somebody knocks on this door, mm -hmm. your credibility is gone. Okay? Because this is how credibility works, all right? And I know you're an intelligent person and you probably don't need to hear this explanation, but I also know your mind's racing right now, okay? Because I've sat across a lot of people in your position over the years, mm -hmm. okay? The bottom line is, is that as soon as we get that, that piece of evidence that solidifies it, mm -hmm. DNA. Okay. As soon as the expert in footwear impressions, the expert in tire impressions, calls and says, yes, I've examined those and they're mm -hmm. a match, mm -hmm. it's all over. Because as soon as that happens, where's your credibility? Where's your believability? Russell, you know there's only one option. What, do you, what, do you, what other option is there? What's the option? Well, I don't think you want the cold-blooded psychopath option. What's the option? That you're gonna kill him, Russell. I don't know, dude. Okay, because uh, don't get me wrong, I've met guys. Oh my God, he's gonna get it to got confess. Off. He's yeah. gonna like be like, oh my God, no, you were the victim. Bernardo being one. Of them. I don't see that. If I saw that in you, I wouldn't be back in here talking to you, quite frankly. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you got me fooled. I don't know. Maybe you got me fooled. I don't know. Ah. This is over. And you can have a... a bad ending? Where... Jessica's parents continue to wonder where her daughter's lying. And I don't know. I mean, obviously, there's a huge search still underway, and it'll continue. It'll continue until her body's found. Once that happens, then I don't know what other cards you would have to play. What are we going to do? Russ. What are we going to do? Call me Russ. Okay. <laughs> he did not! <laughs> Call me in us, please. Unless you know, allergy relief without making them sleepy, so kids can be kids. Live Claritin clear. He doesn't even know what to think. He's like, "What the hell?" I you know, you know, somewhere we can find her easily. Oh. I guess it's something where I can make a call and tell somebody to go to a location and they're going to find her, or is it something where we have to go and uh, take a walk? Because I killed somebody! No dialogue for like 30 minutes? Jesus! Press. Maybe, maybe this would help. Can you tell me what the issue is you're struggling with? Being a bullheaded bitch. Next. Jesus. He's thinking of a believable lie, guys. Give him a second. It's hard to believe this is happening. <laughs> what? This is hard to believe this is... Oh. Why is it hard to believe? Yeah, why? Russ, is there anything you want from me? Is there anything you want me to explain? Is there something missing that you're struggling with that I can shed some light on for you?
I'm struggling with how upset my wife is right now. This investigation will end up costing no less than $10 million. Easy. And they will say no to nothing. Any request this major case manager makes on this case, they've already been told it's approved. Don't even bother asking. Luna? What, what am are I doing you doing? This? I put my best foot forward here for you, but I really have. I don't. I don't know what else to do to to make make you understand the impact of what's happening here. Did we talk? close to where she lives. I've got maps of that general area. Which town is she near? Why don't we start there? I'm not sure if you give me a map of uh, covers Caligar down to the highway. And I'll get Tweed. And South I'll show you. Let me see what I got here. I might have something. <laughs> I'll fucking come back to this like a fucking egg. <laughs> He fucking spewed his shit. Okay, she close to a road. Yep. Fucking serial yeah. killing head ass. Um, this is something where is she is she buried or is she somewhere where if you walk there you would you would fairly easily see her. Okay. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay. Do you want any water? Could anything? you imagine like minding your own business sure. and you see okay. Jessica? I fucking can I like I'd lose my How long shit. Has she been there for? Don't say something fucking goofy, dude. A little over a week. Was it fairly quick from the time? Says Friday something. Night. Friday night? Yeah. So where was she between Thursday night and Friday night? <laughs> With you? Yeah. How long was she alive for? Almost 24 hours, not quite. I am right. so shocked right now. You're doing the right thing here. Okay. And then doing the right thing by putting you in fucking cuffs. The last question I'm going to have for you is... When they go there, and they'll be there shortly, mm -hmm. they're going to find her. Okay. What do you want to talk about? Do you want to work forwards or backwards? Why don't we start with Jessica? I just had a whole POV TikTok show up as start? an ad, like gonna know. Um, <gasps> you saw her in her house. Her I feel so uncomfortable knowing like this really information bad, bad and like girl. obviously well, she was Okay. Marie France uh Como.
There was an open window in the basement of her room. Oh, shut the fuck up! She was away. I went in there a couple of nights before. She came home. Like I, th I like I, I had the leaking suspicion that he did it, but now I'm just so shocked that he actually did it, and it was like something I just. I'm so fucking shocked right now. And fucking kind of from cat too, dude. Like be funny on right now. Why do you think these things happen? Have you spent much time thinking about that? About why? Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think these things happen? I swear to God, it's gonna end just. Spent much time thinking about that? About why? Yeah. Yeah. And then that's literally how it ends. Like, <laughs> but I don't know the answers. And then that's literally how it ends. And I only knew it ended like that because I was sitting. I was sitting here. And this ad popped up, and then it started playing the next video on my phone I can watch later in the list. And that kind of made me mad, kind of sussed me out. I hope you enjoyed the interrogation of Russell Williams. I'm not calling him by his stupid title, because guess what? He killed women. There's just something about killing women that just takes your title away, so I hope you enjoyed. I will see you next Wednesday with another one. Bye.